Hello everybody, my name is Nursultan Sikhsinbaev. I'm an assistant at the Department of Psychiatry, SMA Medical University, PhD doctoral student, and today we will talk, discuss with you about emergency conditions in psychiatry. So first of all, uh, to begin, please pay attention at the main uh, points of our lecture. The concept of emergency conditions in psychiatry, psychomotor agitation and aggressive behavior, emergency suicidal behavior and emergency. So, first question, uh, what are emergency conditions in psychiatry? So, as a result, exposure of external and internal factors, acute pathological conditions develop and which uh, actually uh, help to develop emergency conditions in psychiatry which require emergency diagnosis and the targeted therapy regardless of the severity of the disease. Psychomotor uh, agitation and aggressive behavior one of the frequent manifestations of acute psychosis. And acute psychosis accompanied by anxiety, perplexity, fear, delusion, the growing excitement, incoherent thinking, affect maximum intensity, metabolic change, expenditure of the energy and plastic resources of the body. Secondary brain hypoxia and development of decompensation and acute disorder of uh, various systems. Also, uh, secondly, we will talk with you about our other manifestations like exacerbations of some chronic psychosis, which accompanied by the aggressive behavior. Next one is special dangerous conditions also, which are characterized by imperative hallucinations, delusions of persecution and jealousy, catatonia and disinhibition of instincts against the background of defect in intelligence and emotions. So let's talk about emergency. First of all, the measures of physical restrictions with the help of service tools, the use of medications for revealing, relieving arousal, the drugs of choice, uh, which include benzodiazepine tranquilizers like diazepam, phenazepam. Second emergency conditions in psychiatry, what about we talk uh, today, is suicidal behavior. Please pay attention at the main uh, points. Uh, which leads to development of the suicidal behavior like conviction and the meaningless of life, waiting for the end to come and a history of suicidal attempts, which leads to develop severe depressive states. So, it's a mistake to consider only chronic disease as the cause of suicidal behavior. The reasons for suicidal behavior can also be difficult life situations, family conflicts, maybe commercial failure, loss of loved one, or maybe loneliness. Let's talk about our suicidal behavior in schizophrenia, which are accompanied by imperative voices and hypochondrial delusions. In some cases, suicidal behavior also may be developed in the framework uh, in adolescence, first of all, because in our days it's a very big problem in adolescents and individuals with hysterical character traits, which characterized by demonstrative suicidal attempts. Let's talk about the emergency, unaccessible. Leave a patient with suicidal behavior without supervision or under the supervision of ward neighbors, relatives or hospital security staff. Monitoring should be performed by a doctor or nurse to ignore the persistent and marked reduction in mood of the patient. Inform the patient about a diagnosis of a serious disease without discussing the subsequent tactics of action. Independently prescribed antidepressants to patients with suicidal tendencies before the consulting a psychiatrist. Ignore persistent suicidal statements of the patient, even if they are clearly demonstrative. Discharge patients with suicidal and autoaggressive tendencies without consulting a psychiatrist. And of course, uh, we talk about emergency care in the cases of the suicidal behavior. Uh, we need to prescribe an emergency level, of course, benzodiazepine tranquilizers. It's a drug of choice in these cases, like a diazepam and a phenazepam. Thank you for all attention.